Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to walk through step-by-step -step what you'll need to do to complete assignment 13, uh, transforming XML formatted content. In assignment 12, as you recall, I asked you to look at the compare table on the Opalescence website and format this data as an XML file. What you're looking at here is not a complete um, XML uh, formatted version of the table. So you can see that I have a product name, a tagline, and a caption for each of the products in the table, but I haven't yet accounted for the frequency of use, the wear times, and some of the other data here. So please be aware that what you're seeing here is just a partial uh, representation of the data from that compare table. So if you're following along and doing exactly what I'm doing, um, your XML file should look more complete than this. But this works for our illustration purposes. Now, a lot of you, uh, and in fact, when I did this in class, I set it up this way as well, used parent tag names. And when I say parent tag, that just means that it's a tag like toothpaste here that has some tag embedded in it. So we call these parent tags, and this would be a child tag. A lot of you, I think, and again, me included, used parent tag names that are different from each other. So in this case, we have a block of XML content that's housed within tags called toothpaste. We have the second block that's tagged within or that's housed within tags called Opalescence Go, and so on. What we need to do in order for our XSL um, transformation to work is to have parent tags that are all the same name. And if your XML structured content looks like this, it's actually really easy to do. So we already have the fact that this is a toothpaste in this tag called product name. And again, we already know that the uh, content in this Opalescence Go tag is for Opalescence Go because we have that in our product name. And it's the same for all of these elements in this, in this XML structured content so far. So what I'm going to do is just change out the tag names to say product. For each of these content blocks. This will allow us to transform this content much easier using XSL. OK, so now I have tags that are called product and I have four of them. You can see here. So if I come over to my XSL file, I have, as we talked about uh, in class, um, <clears throat> I have my XML declaration line in line one, and then I have my XSL, sorry, XSL style sheet uh, line in line two, and then in line three, I have my XSL template tag, and I want to match all of the content that comes in this opalescence tag. And again, that tag is the name of my root tag. So if your root tag is not called opalescence, maybe it's called, uh, it could be called whatever, you just need to make sure that this uh, element of your XSL file matches whatever your root tag is called. I'm now going to structure or transform the XML content into some HTML. So I have an HTML opening tag, a body opening tag, and then I'm going to have my uh, headline here be opalescence products. I have that styled or I have that marked up between two between an H1 tag. And then I'm going to write some CSS here. So uh, I have an opening style tag. And I'm going to say for anything that's marked up with an H1 tag, like this line here, I want the font size to be 50 points, so that's large, and I want the font family to be Gil Sans. Anything that's structured in a P tag or a paragraph tag, uh, I'm sorry, anything that's marked up in a paragraph tag, I want it to be 12 points, I want it to be Arial font, and I want it to be this color. Now, if you're not familiar with these values here, or these kind of collections of um, numbers and letters. These are called hexadecimal values, and you can find online a number of different resources that will give you the hexadecimal value for any different color that you, know, you can create on a computer. 
So this one is htmlcolorcodes.com. It's a nice one where you can just uh, drag the sliders around and look at different colors that you might like. And the value that it gives right here is the uh, hex value that you could use in the CSS um, uh, portion of this XSL file. Now I have something that looks a little bit different. So I have anything in the CSS, I have anything that's housed in a span tag with a class attribute of prod name. And we'll see that in just a moment here. In fact, when I click on this, uh, the text editor I'm using underlines all of the um, other instances of prod names. So you can see it down here. Uh, but anything that's uh, housed within a span tag that has a class of prod name, I want it to be 30 points large. I want it to be this Tratatello family. And I want it to be whatever this color is. And then finally, anything that's in a span tag with an attribute of prod tag, I want it to look a little bit different. So I'm going to say those are going to be 20 points. I'm going to put them in this font family called Party Let. And I'm going to have them be this color, whatever that might look like. Then I close out my style tag. And now I'm going to create, a, I'm going to use some of the syntax that you learned about in the LinkedIn Learning videos for XSL. I'm going to use an XSL for each loop that will go through all of the content blocks in my XML file that are housed within tags called product. So remember, we fixed this uh, at the beginning of this video. We changed out the uh, unique names in each of these content blocks and we changed them so that they're all the same. The reason we did that is so that we can use this for each loop and have it go through every content block with the uh, tags that are called product. So we have four of them here. What we're going to do for each time that uh, our loop finds a parent tag called product, it's going to write some text. And I have this text formatted or marked up in a P tag. So remember our paragraph tag is going to look like this. It's going to be 12 points Arial and a certain color. After this P tag, I have our span tag with a class name of prod name. So that's going to look like this. And then I have the XSL tag that actually pulls data from our XML file. So here we have an XSL value of um, call or tag that will select <clears throat> the content that's in between tags called product name. If I go back to my XML file, underneath each of these product parent tags, I have a child tag that's called product name. So there's one, there's one, there's one, and there's one. So again, this is going to loop through my XML file and every time it finds a product tag, it's going to pull whatever text comes between these product name tags. We close our span tag, and then I just have some text that says tagline is, and then we have another span tag uh, with an attribute of prod tag. Once again, we have that attribute because that allows us to style it differently using CSS. And then we have another <clears throat> XSL call or tag that's going to say find any of the content that's housed within tags called tagline. So if I go back here, I can see the tagline is right here. So when this XSL file transforms my XML into HTML, I know there's a lot of initialisms there, it's going to only be interested in content that comes between um, tags that are called product, and it's only going to look for the content within those product content blocks that come between tags called product name and tagline. It's going to totally ignore this caption line because we don't have any XSL value of um, tag that asks for 
the caption content. If we did, it would there would need to be some XSL value of tag that said select caption here. But we don't have that, so it's just going to be skipped over. It'll be ignored. If we did have uh, another type of um, parent tag in this file, uh, let's just call it example. And I had some child tags here. Let's say uh, example one with some content. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's, for the purposes of illustration, let's just pretend like uh, this is all going to be the same. So we'll put this in here and then we'll close out our example tag. What do you think would happen? Take just a second and consider. When our XSL file loops over our XML, it's only looking for those parent tags that are called product. So it's going to start at the top and it'll say, okay, here's a product tag and it'll pull the data that we want from it. Do the same for the second, third, and fourth one. But when it gets here, it's going to ignore all of this content because it's not housed within a tag called product. So even though we have child tags that match, oops, that match our XSL value of calls, they'll be ignored. And we'll see that in just a moment here. All right. Now, I do just want to check to make sure that this XML uh, content is still valid after I've edited it a bit. So I'm going to select it all. I'm going to paste it into an XML validator and select validate. And it says no errors were found. So that's good. Now what I want to do is use the X, uh, XSL transformation engine that's linked in the assignment description and I'm going to clear out what comes in here by default and in the XML code window I'm going to paste in my XML code and in the XSL code window I'm going to paste in my XSL code and then I'm going to click edit or uh, the green button here and we can see that it's worked so I want to talk through this uh, a little bit just so that it makes sense. We have this, uh, whoops, this big headline called opalescence products. Remember, this comes from the HTML that we wrote in our XSL file. We said we want to have the words opalescence products styled as an H1 or marked up as an H1. Within our CSS, we specified what we want any text that's marked up as an H1 to look like. So it's going to be 50 points and Gil Sands font. This looks to be 50 points to me and I'm familiar with Gil Sands. It looks like it's Gil Sands. So that works. Anything that's structured or uh, no, I'm sorry, let's let's come down here. So now we're going to look and see if we got the content from our for each loop uh, that we wanted. So I have Opalescence toothpastes with an apostrophe S. Tagline is daily whitening toothpaste. All right, so let's see how we got that. Remember that the for each loop is looking for any content block that's called product. So here's our first one. And then it says, we go back, opalescence toothpastes tagline. So here again, remember we're calling the product name tag from our XML file and that's here so we have opalescence toothpaste and then I have added you can see an apostrophe s so that's where that's coming from opalescence toothpastes then we have the words tagline is right there and then we have our XSL value of tagline which is right here in our XML file, daily whitening toothpaste, daily whitening toothpaste. Perfect. So that worked great. I have four of those, opalescence toothpaste, go, PF, and boost with the different taglines. And it's ignored, just as I suspected, this fifth um, content block that I put in because it's not labeled as product. So when it looped through, it just ignored it. All right. 
So that's what you need to do for this assignment. Now, this is obviously hideous, and I've made it hideous on purpose because I don't want you to simply copy and paste exactly what I have here. You're welcome to use this as your template, but I do want you to play around a little bit with some of the sizes, some of the fonts, some of the colors. Maybe you create a different type of sentence um, that pull, you know, that pulls the content. I want you to take this as an opportunity to practice a little bit. I've given you the, the skeleton that you're welcome to use, but um, play around with it. That's going to be a great way to learn. Um, if I can help, if there are any questions that you might have, then please don't hesitate to let me know, and I will talk to you soon.